powerful, non-violent tool they have, according to John Lewis, to decide their fate for the next four years. Good morning and welcome to TVC's comprehensive coverage of the 2024 Edo State Governorship election. I am Veronica Dan Ikoya and joining me on set this morning is Benga. Yes, good morning to you, Veronica. It's, good so good. it's so good to be here this morning. Absolutely. Yes. To keep tabs with developments coming out of Edo State. Exactly. It has been tagged uh, the keenly contested election, mm -hmm. but that remains to be seen as events unfold later on. Today. And that's why we're here to Absolutely. make sure that as the media, we we'll beam our searchlight on every nook and cranny of Edo State Absolutely. and uh, watch Edo State people decide their fate for the next four years. Absolutely. Now, we We'll be bringing you live updates, expert analysis, and on-the-ground reports from our team of correspondents strategically positioned across the state's 18 local government areas. Now, today's election will be a keenly contested one with 18 candidates jostling to take over the highly coveted governorship seat. Let's hear what active players in the Edo State election have to say. We have done trainings to equip our staff, adult staff. We have done training for electoral officers. We have done training for an engagement for the people with disability so that nobody will be left uh, alone. We want to conduct all inclusive elections. We have had um, meetings with the security agencies, and they promise us that they will be professional in their duty. On our part, we have also um, received material from the central bank, sensitive material. Before we did that, we invited all the political parties. And the assurance we are giving you is that their vote we can't. Because our duty here is to implement the, the vision and the um, mandate of the commission. That is to conduct election that is free fair, credible, and all-inclusive election, their vote will surely count, I can assure you. Well, I, I, I'm not sure that we'll be a voter apathy because Edo people are politically active. They know their rights, and they know what to do. On our part, we have been so transparent in the system, right from the, the, uh, the uh, continuous uh, voters' uh, a uh, continuous uh, voters registration, INEC has been trans uh, transparent, and the people of Edo State came out a mass, a mass to register for the exercise. So there is not pessimistic at all that they will, they, will, they will not come. I'm positive that they will come because the Edo people are educated and enlightened. The police has taken the bull by the horn to make sure we carry out straight analysis in those states, and this forms the basis for our deployments to various places to make sure we have a very good and perfect electoral process in those states. Uh, our deployment is to take care of so many things. One, to escort and guide electoral materials to protect the uh, INEC officials, accredited observers, uh, both uh, international and domestic observers to protect all critical facilities, polling units, including, and of course, um, pollution centers. Our deployment, again, is to take care of so uh, many areas, considering the location, the location of uh, those states, involving about three, about three states, including the riverine areas and the waterways. We have done deployment to take uh, care of certain areas based on our threat analysis, where we have noticed that we likely have some political issues. We have good, up appreciable number of deployment done in these uh, areas. So, definitely, we, our, our, our intelligence has shown us so many things, uh, which, of course, I'm not expected to be willing to have some of those things on here now. So, the president, as the father of the nation, has made it clear that we want peace in Edo State. And like the IDP said, that the police as, as uh, an agency, uh, the responsible institution that has been empowered by the electoral hearts to carry out certain obligations and responsibilities. This we will carry out 
with utmost sense of excellence, professionalism, and impartiality. So whatever federal government is bringing in is to support the system, to support the, the process, to make sure we have free, fair, and credible elections in those states. Uh, the police, Fiaro Olumu Yua Adejabi, is speaking there on the level of preparedness of security officials to ensure a smooth process and that the people can come out there. And earlier on, we saw the Edo State INEC uh, REC, that's the Resident Electoral Commissioner, Anubum Onoha, also speaking with regards to the level of preparedness of INEC and also the electorates to turn out to cast their ballot this morning. True, that is the kind of assurance um, we need. Okay, you know, there's been all sort of back and forth. Oh, he's a cousin to someone and all, but he has come out to assure that, listen, I'm here to do my job. Mm -hmm. And that uh, if anybody tries to maybe influence me whatsoever, I can as well resign. But the point here is this, is there to do his job and Nigerians and also the people of Edo states, they await mm -hmm. and see what uh, will come out of this. We have our senior correspondent Uchi Okoro standing by in Benin State to speak with us uh, this morning to tell us uh, the situation of things, uh, the level of preparedness. Uche, good morning. It's good to see you and that you are up and about right now in uh, Benin City. I can see a few cars moving right behind you. Talk to us uh, what uh, the mood is ahead of the election today. Uh, it is election day here in uh, it is election day here in uh, Edo State. Uh, the time has come for the people of uh, Edo State to go to the polls to elect uh, a new governor uh, to the, who is expected to pilot the affairs of the state for another four years. Now uh, hitting the streets this morning, I, uh, my, my observation is that uh, the people are yet to uh, fully comply with the curfew that was imposed by the Inspector General of Police. You know there's, a, there's supposed to be a, or rather the police has uh, imposed a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. curfew here in, in, in Edo State, across Edo State. But coming, uh, hitting the streets this morning, I, I believe uh, people are trying to uh, make, get, get to their, their destinations. There, I cannot say that there is 100% uh, compliance to the uh, curfew imposed by the police as, of, as at this time. Perhaps security agencies are still yet to fully come out to in, in, in enforce this curfew. But right now, uh, uh, there is still vehicular movement in, in the city. People are still moving around trying to get to, perhaps, I want to believe, trying to get to the various polling units where they will be casting their votes. The atmosphere in uh, Benin is very calm. I mean, already though local government area, which has the second uh, highest number of registered voters in Edo State. So we expect a lot of activity. All right, we'll definitely get back to Uchi Okoro for more updates. Uh, uh, but uh, some of the things that he rightly mentioned, he said that uh, the atmosphere is calm, uh, although there are as movements here and there that he doesn't think that there is about 100% compliance to the curfew in place by the police, but also it might be that some of these persons are moving to the various destination uh, to cast their ballot. Yeah, uh, so the polling unit. So um, that could also be the reason why we are seeing some level of movement here and there. True. Um, Einek has said that they crossed their, you know, T's dotted their eyes, but is how assuring is this? But another issue is um, the security agencies. Okay, uh, according to the police, 35,000 of them, 8,000 of um, other security agents, and an additional from the Nigerian army as well. But I, some have said that uh, maybe it's too militarized, but we want to save. Let, let's even hear from Uchi what the situation of things with regards to the security is. Uh, if uh, the people also feel that uh, these people are too much and that the election is being militarized, as it is being said, Uche, can you hear me? Absolutely. Right. Now, the uh, question well, uh, of uh, the presence of heavy security, um, what are you seeing this morning and how are the people feeling about the presence of the security operatives? 
Well, I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I, I have seen, uh, would I use the word worse? I've, I've seen worse, in, uh, if that's the word, but not, uh, not worse as in a bad thing, but I've seen uh, worse in, in, in terms of uh, uh, a, a, higher, a higher number of uh, security personnel being deployed for, for elections in other states. So this is not the heaviest deployment that I've seen on, on, on ground. I'm talking about places, places like Bayelsa, Anambra, Rivers and Co. But as at this time, you would see a, a, a lot more presence of security personnel but today uh, with in, in from from where I was to where I am right now uh, we encountered just one security check all right and, and those were uh, a combination of soldiers and uh, the Nigerian police uh, and this this is a, a departure from my experience covering elections uh, over the years and, and, and in different states so I don't think uh, the people of those states will be worried about uh, uh, the massive deployment but this is not to say that uh, deployment hasn't been sufficiently done. It is not in my place to say that deployment hasn't been sufficiently done in Edo State uh, because the police has, ha, have said they, uh, uh, they, they've deployed. I'm very much aware that uh, police officers were, were sent down to Edo State from neighboring states, rivers in particular. I personally saw um, them lined up and waiting to hit the road at the River State Police Command Headquarters in Port Harcourt a few days ago. So I believe the police has done its job. But as at this time, I'm talking based on my observation over, over uh, my stay in, in, in Edo State and my observation this morning. I wouldn't say that this election is militarized, right? I'd rather say that I believe that the police uh, ha has uh, everything covered. All right? I, wouldn't, I don't think, as at this time, the, the residents of Edo State have anything to worry about as far being over-policed. Because for me, from my experience in other states, but at this time, you'll be hearing sirens, you'll see a lot of military patrols, as at this time, you'll see a lot of police patrols by this time. But I haven't, I haven't seen that this morning. Maybe as the, as the hours, as the, as the clock ticks, uh, they, would, they would come out to enforce. As I said earlier, the curfew, the compliance to the curfew, as at this time, the area that are parts of Benin City that have been around. The compliance to the curfew so far has been pretty low. I'm actually wondering why it is not, it is not normal. I mean, I'm not saying that we expect the issues to be 100% uh, 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 completely scant, 100% scanty, but I, I must say that my, from my assessment, comp comparatively speaking, uh, the curfew, uh, compliance to the curfew so far, uh, so far has been low. Maybe as we get closer to uh, 8 a.m. Uh, enforcement would, uh, would the enforcement would be stepped up as uh, residents approach uh, their polling units to begin to cast their votes. For now, as you can see behind me, there is still vehicular movement. Uh, you can see there are still uh, uh, pedestrians and motorists moving around the city. Uh, uh, so, as, as at this time, there, that, there is that, that's, that's, there is no sense of uh, this election being militarized in uh, those states. Now, you said, um, looking at, let's talk about INEC a little bit. Um, INEC said that they've crossed uh, their T's, they've dotted their I's. In your opinion, how assuring is this? <laughs> well, in my opinion, uh, you know, from my experience covering elections, I would say I don't expect them to say anything less, right? You know, I don't expect them to say anything, anything less or more than they have said. But one thing that uh, I'm, I'll be looking at to see is if voting, simultaneous voting and accreditation would, ha would start uh, at 8 a.m. or at most 8.30 a.m. I want to see how early it would start. From my experience, I have never, I have covered a lot of elections and I have never covered any that has uh, commenced at 8 a.m. or 8.30 a.m. So maybe, maybe, just maybe this would be the first. But I say that because, you know, those were some of the assurances that INEC once again gave that they would ensure um, uh, uh, early arrival of their officials and materials, sensitive and non-sensitive, to the polling units. Now, yesterday, when we uh, ha had the, the resident electoral commissioner live on air, he mentioned that the expectation is that by 8.30 a.m., uh, this uh, simultaneous voting accreditation would commence. So we, I am hoping to, that's actually one uh, thing I'll be looking out for to see if perhaps this would be the first election in <laughs> that I'll be covering that would actually uh, commence at 8 or 8.30 a.m. Knowing fully well that the terrain here uh, occasioned by the, by the not so convenient roads in uh, those states might pose a challenge to that. And you know you have about nine uh, River Rhine local government areas. So these are some of the uh, issues that might might uh, hinder or slow INEC down from achieving its early start target. Generally, uh, the commission has said they are they are prepared. I was at their headquarters yesterday. Uh, the most of most of the, the resident electoral commissioner wasn't there. The money of their uh, heads of department uh, were not were not on ground at the at the 
command, uh, at, uh, I beg your pardon, at the INEX state headquarters. Many of them were out uh, in the field monitoring and making last minute preparations, ensuring that uh, things were going well. Security agencies were, were you know, uh, giving absolute security to that location, which I believe will be the collation center later in the day. So generally, the, the commission has said they are ready. I believe that the true assessment or test of their preparedness would, would it, it, by, by my clock, in, in, about, uh, in about one hour's time, we'll be able to tell uh, those, we'll begin to we'll know if we are finally seeing early signs of, uh, of a good performance from the Commission. All right, looking at um, the rains are here, let's talk about the weather. How's the weather this morning? Uh, there's signs that uh, there'll be rain showers later in the day, or is it so beautiful this morning? It's a very Cool, calm, lovely weather, but you know that we are prepared for the downpour. In our vehicles, we have our umbrellas, we have our raincoats, uh, and of course, we wore shoes that are that are that that are weather that would be weather compliant if it begins to rain. Mm. Of course, you know that uh, given the uh, yesterday, I mentioned that the civil society uh, the civil society situation room yesterday at their maiden briefing on their do state election described the weather as an on predictable, variable. And that's true. The weather is really clear right now. It's not sunny. It's not wet. It's just lovely weather. If it stays like this, I would be very happy. Everyone would be very happy. This is the perfect weather for the Edo State uh, governorship election. But you know, the weather is very unpredictable. In the next minute, it could begin to rain. It's been raining that way uh, since we got here. So everyone is prepared for the rain, I must say. Uh, yesterday, one of the, the concern that has been raised across Across, across board, speaking about observers, civil society, and even the political parties themselves, they are hoping that INEC has made arrangements for the rain. They do not want a situation where if the rain uh, begins to pour, I, uh, you, there will be situations where election will have to be suspended. So that's what they are saying, that if the rain comes, if the rain begins to pour, what plans uh, uh, have, has INEC made to, to ensure that voting continues? You know, what plans have INEC made to shelter voters, to shelter its staff and all of that? So, this is, INEC has said they are ready. So, these are some of the things we'll also be looking out for when we go out into the field. It's, it's a clear weather right now, but trust me, what we're experiencing right now, uh, it's no guarantee that this is how the day is going to continue. It's no guarantee about how the day is going to end. The rain uh, could just begin to pour at any time. So, uh, we, we hope that when it does, or if it does, uh, we would it would in no way hamper the smooth conduct of, uh, of the election. And some of the electorate might just want to sit back home and relax and enjoy the weather as, if the, as it is. Uh, but uh, there are other concerns, uh, and I wonder how that is playing out this morning uh, from what you are seeing across uh, Benin. Uh, there are talks about uh, the high cost of fuel, some saying that uh, that could be a major concern for them coming out for the election. Uh, there are others who are saying the situation of the economy is also a major concern. What are the feelers you're getting with regards to these issues? Well, absolutely. Uh, the cost of fuel would uh, pose a challenge because, you know, um, trans cost of transportation has almost doubled, has tripled in some places. Yesterday, we, yesterday night, we bought... Uh, uh, fuel for 